calls in more and more men, tramway services have decided that women will have to take over. After instruction and practice among themselves, these women were ready to try their ticket-punching skill on the public. The public didn't mind at all. They learn all the men's jobs, and they earn the same wages as men. Their uniform is smart and comfortable. They are quick and intelligent. They are good. They're doing a man's job. helped on farms, very few have made it the full-time job these girls have. There's nothing in the way of farm work they haven't done and done well. My friend and I took over this farm a year ago. We'd had 12 months training and here we still work under the direction of the supervisor. We've got 300 acres and we run about 1,100 sheep. Both of us have always been keen on country life, so we started doing our bit in this war by working on the land. Now we've got this place on our own, grand. Of course, there are other women, farmers' wives and sisters, carrying on their farms. They get a little help from neighbours, but they're doing nearly all the work themselves. This farmer's wife, with the help of a young girl, is running their station while her husband is in camp. Workshops and factories in both islands change over to double shifts to increase their output. Those women, many of them mothers and wives of men in the forces, are doing their jobs in their spare time. Other women are working full time and more in factories. They make civilian goods that used to be imported, uniforms and munitions. To help overcome wartime shortages, shopkeepers appeal to customers. Housewives know about it. Now they must call for food that used to be delivered. Each visit to the store reminds them now that war comes daily nearer home. And gladly they do walk, while it means that soldiers ride. To bring a basket or paper for wrapping the goods they buy, these are small troubles, cheerfully accepted, for the sake of ships and sailors crossing dangerous seas. The war on the home front is more real now than ever it has been. All the ordinary things of life are changed by it. The ordinary ways of doing things are different. When it comes to feeding calves, land girls are out on their own. Mothering young animals comes more naturally to girls than to boys, and under a girl's supervision, every calf gets good treatment. To the farmer's assistants have come the land girls. Where the boys have gone into the forces, girls have come forward to do their jobs. Since pioneering days, New Zealand women have helped on farms, but of recent years, machines have taken their place. Now they've come back to the cow sheds for the duration. Out of the city, city women are at work in the fields. These women have worked on farms in the weekends. Not for them the pleasures of sport, nor a lazy seaside life. And the money they earn goes to provide parcels for the boys overseas. They may be taking over their jobs, but they're sending them the wages. These girls can do nearly all the jobs men used to do. They haven't got round to engine driving yet, but who knows? Pushing trolleys, handling heavy luggage, it all comes the same to them. Some still wear skirts. Most of them prefer trousers. They're doing hard work, and they believe in being dressed for it. There's no place for silk stockings on this job. These days, it's a pleasure to travel. The nurses look after their own fitness with regular exercise. Their work calls for courage, skill, and endurance. Behind them is a tradition that is a shining page in our history. Fort is reached, a fort somewhere in the Middle East. Approaching the Great Pyramid of Cheops, the toys get a close view of some of its two million blocks of stone. The guide tells them the story of this pyramid. It's one story they've heard they can put in their letters home. Here, an inward film from the Middle East is having its density checked before going on to the enlarger in the darkroom. The enlarger is continuous. The film rolls through above the lens 
and printing paper rolls through below. The paper is machine developed, three rolls at a time, and the letters become visible. For all this, the post office charges a five penny stamp for the services and ten pence for civilian mail. They sort the photographic letters, fold them to show the address, and put them into window envelopes. The Inwood Airgraph mail is ready for delivery. It's cheap, it's fast, and it gets there. In Wellington and other centres, volunteer workers of the New Zealand Navy League are busy teasing and carding the greasy natural wool to make special garments to keep out cold and wet. They prepare it by hand. All have found out for themselves how they can best help win this war. And yet one more type of wheel at work for the Navy. Meanwhile, more women of the same group are busy with needles. They are doing their part in the self-set tasks of the Navy League. Their work produces not ordinary socks, but giant sea boot stockings, made for the men who stand for hours on decks awash with cold seas, or on watch amidst ice and snow. From other wool is knitted jerseys, balaclavas, mittens, scarves. These things go to men who fight while women spin. Thousands of girls from every part of New Zealand have entered camp for training to release men for combat duties. With a sergeant to bark commands, they soon learnt the meaning of Army PT. And bitter experience taught them that an army marches on its feet. The music's still the same, but the words are now, come to the cookhouse door, girls. the army, they bring a feminine touch. Hanging parachutes to dry, for a wet parachute is dangerous. Packing parachutes, work that demands real skill. The smallest detail out of place will kill a man as certainly as an enemy bullet. Sewing fabrics for wings or fuselage is more important now than sewing costumes and frocks. In our ranks are trained tailoresses doing this work once done by men. And men are being replaced in the dope shop where torn and damaged fabric is repaired. First it is sewn, then treated with special paint. Honest, dirty overalls are uniforms here. In the equipment store there are spare parts to be checked and orders to be filled. And it's no use sending a workshop a propeller when they ask for a spanner. Even driving a crane is easy enough, after a little practice. Everywhere on our Air Force stations you'll find us at work. Not as many of us as are really needed, but our numbers are steadily growing. For some of us, this is our daily job. All our work must be done on time. Aprons are no new uniforms to us. On our Air Force stations, we've taken the place of men at cooking, baking, jobs that we can do while the men are trained to fight. Meals must be ready on time too. Lines of hungry men keep some of us busy. Others in our own mess receive the same food as the men, and it's good food. <laughs> We have our own wash house on every station. A place to sit and sew, to knit, to have a cup of tea. A few weeks ago, most of us were strangers to one another. Now it's different. It's not the uniform we have in common, but the job, the work and relaxation we enjoy together. peaceful arts, women's hands have worked to tame wild things and turn their use to peaceful ways of living. Now come new demands upon the quickness of their fingers. War needs women's skill as well as men's strong arms, women's endurance as well as courage from New Zealand's men, 
women's speed in execution of small motions, as well as man's ability to plan the great campaigns and spell the words of war. Death, destruction, fire, famine, war over the land, war in the air, war at sea, war in industry, war at home, war in the nursery, war in farm and factory, war for women and children. No longer dainty hands and pretty dress, steel now for the guns. No longer lily-fingered loveliness, steel fingers now, dirty fingers now, working fingers now, bombs now, metal now. Now it is war, and now it is women working for war. No longer peace and prettiness for women. Silk for strolling in the easy feminine parade of beauty. Wool for the socks, socks for the men, men for the war, women at the machines, weapons for war. Gone are the days of peace. Gone are the days of graceful draperies for women at their ease and men admiring. Cloth now for uniforms, cloth for the dress of battle, women to weave it, women to shape it, women to work for war. New Zealand is taking to wings. To get them machines, New Zealanders in many centres paid two pounds and more per head. Here is the national record. Among the cities, Palmerston North led in sales per head. Next best was Wellington. And Auckland sales passed the half million mark as the best total in New Zealand. Pretty girls were good saleswomen. But the best selling point was the knowledge that our fighting services could use what we could give them. Now was our chance to show that we could give it. When the planes flew over the cities, one look was enough to make a quick decision. They might have been unfriendly planes. So we paid our money to put more of our men and our machines up there in our sky. It's vital work and more and more women are doing their share. There's plenty of room for others. Driving fuel tankers. Fueling planes. Loading ammunition. This is no game of make-believe. Starting planes. Every day our air power grows. Every day planes take off on reconnaissance and training flights. Every day the business of keeping our planes in the air is shared by the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. Some of us are in training as radio operators. For a start, this means practice, concentration, and more practice. Our standard of efficiency is that of the men. As yet, we are not needed as radio operators in the planes, but our work on the ground will link us with pilots and operators in the air. We must know the conditions under which they work. This is how we learn. Here's one of the many orchards where the army is giving a hand. Without such help, there'd not be enough labor because the war's abolished unemployment. Hop picking is another job that these recently called up men have to turn to. They cut the vines down from the overhead wires and leave the picking to the women and children. All ages are to be found here. Hop picking has always been as much a holiday as a job. Time among the hops is something of a picnic. 
taking the place of men now driving trucks and tanks on Pacific jungle trails or Italian mountain roads are women who can handle heavy trucks with all the skill of experienced men. Unloading the trucks goes with the job of driving them. Neither is easy work nor light. The skill of driving heavy trucks in busy wartime traffic is a skill these women have learnt. Clearing letterboxes takes them on a daily trip that is more than a pleasant ride around the suburbs, when you have to do it every day in every sort of weather and up to time. They're carrying on a job they've proved they can do well. They work like men, but they're women still when it comes to knocking back a cup of chatter water. The drink perks them up, the hand that rocks the engine wields the lipstick, and they're ready for the road once more. Women in uniforms, working, marching, women in the ranks, women in the factories, women taking part in the 20th century's biggest parade, women who work for war. These are pictures of hospital ships bringing New Zealand boys back home, the sick and the wounded who have done their share of a great task not yet finished. The more serious cases go straight from ship to ambulance under the watchful eyes of the Orangis nurses and medical orderlies who know every man by name. To them, the New Zealanders have so much endeared themselves that they're no longer just cases, but friends. Everything possible is done to make the men comfortable and to get them quickly to their homes. Staff workers and volunteers from the Red Cross and John Ambulance and the EPS set to with a will. A special hospital train is run into a siding at the back door of the clearing station. Here too, good equipment and expert staff minister to the comfort of men for whom even the best is not too good. These women have made up their mind it's no good staying at home and getting cold feet about the wall. Our papier mache is made from one inch strips of waste paper. Whether it's for slings, splints, basins, trays, or any other first aid or hospital equipment. With their covering of waterproof glue, they can be used even for boiling water. After a great deal of washing, all the filling comes out, and the next job is to unravel the bag wash. On two days each week, when their children are at school, these voluntary helpers of the Order of St. John are turning out bandages for the NZEF. Caught in the vortex, New Zealand must turn from self-improvement to self-preservation. Workmen turn aside to the sound of voices more insistent, more menacing. Democracy's cost of living must be paid in a new currency. Across every avenue of national life cuts the barrier of total war. But democracy must look to what comes after. Air raid rehearsals became part of our lives. We never knew when an attack might come. I feel very sure that all of you men are going to enjoy your stay here in New Zealand very much. You'll find that you'll like New Zealanders, or most of them, and that the New Zealanders will like you, or most of you.